The reason I decided to make this DVD was to tell you a little bit about my story in Jiu Jitsu and I want to show you how it's possible to reach a top level even if you're a nat natural talent. That's the good thing about Jiu Jitsu that's different from any other sport. If you're not good in basketball, no matter how much you train, no, how much you, you take some effort to improve, you're not going to become the best. You might improve some, but you're not going to be the best. That's the same thing with soccer or any other sport. But Jiu Jitsu is different. Even if you have no talent in the beginning, if you train hard, if you work on the techniques, if you insist, you're going to become good. And if you want, you're going to be able to become the best. So on this DVD, we're going to be dividing in three parts. The first part, I'm going to tell my story and tell how I did it, how I did to become successful. Now, on the second part, I have invited some of my friends to comment some moments of my old fights and correct some mistakes that I did in the past. And in the last part, I have selected five techniques to show you step by step how it's done and show myself doing them in a tournament. So it should be good and I hope you enjoy it. I started Jiu Jitsu when I was 12 years old. I used to take the public bus to go to my school and every time that I would pass in the street of in Ipanema I would see a big sign saying Academy of Jiu Jitsu and I decided to enter. And at this, this time, 1991, I didn't even know what was Jiu Jitsu. It was not even popular in Rio. But I was lucky to enter Jiu Jitsu because I fell in love right away. As soon as I started to, to learn, I could never stop again. And the good thing was that I was lucky to go straight to a school that was very good, with very good teachers, great masters, that I'm very thankful for them. So I started with Jacaré, Romero Jacaré. Also as an instructor, he had Hachim. And during all my life, I had contact with many other black belts that I'm also thankful. For example, Comprido, Telo, Franjinha, Leozinho. Castelo, Fábio Gurgel, Trave, Magrão, Muzio and many others top black belts that were able to help me and help improve my techniques. Uh, I, since the beginning I, I like to compete and I would always lose. From 12 until I was 15 years old, I never won, not even one single fight. Now, when I was about 15 years old, I decided to be an extended student and I went to Iowa in the US. You don't choose where you go, but I was very happy that I ended up going there because it's such a, a different experience from Brazil, you know, it's so cold over there, it's so different, especially because I went to a city that had only 400 people living there. Also there, I joined the wrestling team because I didn't want to be one year without do, doing Jiu Jitsu. And the wrestling team was really nice because I, I couldn't, I could get the chance to experience another fight style. Uh, I, I did good, you know, I wasn't the best one, but I was able to have more victories there than defeats. It was also in Iowa that I had, I had my first big injury. I dislocated my shoulder, it was a major thing for me. It, I went to the doctors there and what they would say was that I didn't have a, a body strong enough to do this kind of sport. Okay, so after this, I came back to Brazil, I keep competing, and then I start to win one or two fights. I was able to pass like the first round, and then I would get nervous and lose again. And there is one thing, it was interesting about being nervous in tournament, and I think that works pretty much for everyone. In the beginning, you're like this. You just want to get over with it. Even if you lose, I would go to the tournament and think, man, I just want to go back home, you know, I just want this to be over, even if I lose in the first minute. And that's what would happen, you know, I would lose quick, first minute, first three minutes, I get some meat, go home, and then I would be like, oh man, next time I would do different. Tá Bora, 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 Bora. And 
then as I got more experience, the time went by, I started to do different. I would get in and like, I just want to win the first fight. That was my goal. Was like, if I win the first fight, I'm happy. I did my job, I can go home. And that was exactly what would happen. I would get in, win my first mat, be like relieved. The second mat, I would step in and lose. Even if it wasn't quick, even if I fought the whole time, I would lose by points or whatever. But things were getting good. I was changing my mentality with this. And little by little, as the time went by, I started to get in, like, I can do this. I, I'm not going to be happy with just one victory, you know. I want to go for a medal. I want to win third place. I want to get second place at least. And again, that's exactly what happened because I set this as a goal. And when you do this, you go after. I would win the first. I would not celebrate the first one anymore because I was focusing on winning the second. And then eventually, when I got third place or second, I would be already satisfied. And as time went by, I start to get in and aim for the first place. And that's a big chance because then you have to adapt to your mindset. You have to get in, focus on what you want, get in looking for the first place for the medal, thinking on, of the victory. About this time I ended up my high school and I entered college. I took uh, marketing and was was a very good thing. I really enjoyed the, the learning process and everything. But at this age you start to have some pressure from the family. You know, you have to get work, you have to decide what you're gonna do for your life. Even if they don't say you have to, you know they expect you to do this. Uh, and one thing that I, I would listen a lot was like, oh, you can do whatever you want, but you, you have to be the best. And, and that's, actually it's a lot of pressure, you know, because if you say, oh, you can do whatever you want, but you have to be the best, it's not easy to be the best. Whatever you choose is not easy. Especially I was like, man, that, so I can never do Jiu Jitsu, I'm never gonna be the best. You know, I was thinking, who's the best in Jiu Jitsu? Maybe Hickson, but I'm not the best for sure. And I have learned many things in, in my college doing marketing, but one thing that I have learned is that if you cannot be the best in certain aspect, you create a new one and you become the best on this new aspect. aspect, aspect sorry. So as as this was pretty much what I said, I could not be as good as Hickson at this moment, so I'm going to be as the best guy on my weight class. If I cannot be the best teacher in Brazil, I'm going to be the best teacher who speaks English. So you set different uh, aspects, different goals, and you go for it. That, that's what I did pretty much. So when I entered for the brown belt, I think the brown belt was the best belt that I that I went through. When I had the most victory, I would compete every weekend, every month. I would have many victories after the other. You know, like I would win like three, four tournaments in a row. Everybody was like starting to get surprised. The little kid, the fat little boy that had no talent, was starting to to make good. And while this process that I was competing every month. Every weekend that I could, I was dropping weight for the world tournament to enter as a hoster. It would be my first tournament as a hoster, uh, which is something about 57 kilos with the gi, 57 and a half. But a week before the tournament, I was ready to go and completely decide that it was time for me to change the belt. So the team gave me the black belt and I was like man one week before you know let, man, let me try as a brown belt I, I have a chance so okay I accept the challenge I went there I step in I was confident I start the fight I start winning by two points and then I got submitted in the arm just like in the beginning it was really like a, a cold water in my head you know so just a little bit before the 2003 World Tournament, I signed in again as a black belt and like five days before the tournament, in the internet, it came, came out the, the brackets. I went to see the bracket and it couldn't be worse. I'm telling you, my first fight was with the same guy who submitted me in the first round in the year before and was also the guy who was the champion. So, in theory, my second fight would be against a guy who beat me already five times before. In all the belts, he beat me on blue, 
purple brown belt and now I was about to face him as a black belt so that couldn't be good at all and probably the final was going to be against a guy who was eight times Brazilian champion and I want to remind you that I was never Brazilian champion and also another thing was that for this this world tournament the Mundial it was my last chance to train hard because I was about to graduate, I was just getting graduated in, in college and if I didn't succeed now it would be very hard for me to train as I was training, w working in a regular job, you know, full time and stuff. I had no intention to give up Jiu Jitsu but how could I work in full time, prepare myself like I would like to, you know, I, I saw that at the time it was very hard. So that that's the other pressure that I had from the other side. So I'm gonna tell you now the, the steps, you know, each fight, a little bit of each fight that I, I had in the Mundial. So I was ready to face my, my hardest opponent in theory, was the champion of the year before. And my plan with this guy was to always keep ahead on the fight. I didn't mind if I had one to zero, two to one. I didn't care what the score was going to be. I didn't want to get submit and I wanted to win by points, getting at least one point ahead. So th that's exactly what I did. I started sweeping him and then I would keep my point ahead. He would come after me and get back the sweep. And then I would try to go for his back and I was always keeping one step ahead until the end of the fight. In the very end, as he was losing, he tried he, he went for it, you know, it was like everything and nothing for him. As he tried, I was able to do another sweep and I got ahead on the fight by like four points and he couldn't, uh, you know, went after anymore. So for me, it was like getting all the bad energy, you know, it was like getting back in, 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 the, in the game, having a good chance to win. So when the referee stand up my arm, I knew that I was in a good day. And, and that's very important, when you feel that you had a chance. When he stand up my arm, I knew that I was going to win this day. At least that was my mindset, like I said. I was only thinking of the victory. Not even for a moment I let the chance of being defeated came in my mind. So after my first fight, I went to rest. I sit on the crown, you know, with my friends, my girlfriend. And I had the chance to see uh, my opponent talked with his coach and it was a funny thing because the coach was saying oh you're gonna win easy, he's too tired, you know, go for it and stuff and that, that didn't bother me, you know, because I was so confident that I just entered, you know, going ready to go and the fight started, you know, I pull guard, I swept him it was easy the way I swept him, you know, I didn't expect to be so easy but I, then he got me back and he swept me back, he was on top. At this time I was on bottom and, and I remember my friends say, go, go. And I look at them very calm because I was confident that I was going to sweep again. And then after this, I set up my sweep, I stand up, put him down, I pass his guard, went from the mount. On those positions in a tournament, if you lose one chance, you might not have another one. So from there I keep attacking, waiting for the good chance, I attack. I tried the choke, I tried the arm, and then he defend, I switch for another arm and submit him. And for the first time, I was in a final of a world tournament, and even better as a black belt, something that nobody would ever expect, you know. And I want you to remind you that I was that little fat guy, you know, that had no talent um, in the beginning, that nobody would, if someone had to make a bet, I was not the guy who they would bet on. So I went to the final, but my mentality was not that I was already happy, you know, I wanted to win. I was like, if I made this far, I want to go all the way, I want to be champion over here. And then I walk in the mat, so I walk in, focus on what to do, and it, it was good, you know. I, I, I was never in danger, I, was, I had control of the fight, I was able to put on my game, I was controlling the fight the whole time. I swept him once. He tried to defend. He went after the fight. I swept him again. And I was good because I had a strategy before and I stick with the strategy. I never changed. I went step by step 
and I heard my my coach saying, one minute to go, don't let him do any points. I was four points ahead, like I said. And at this point, I start to see, like, man, the, my life started to go quick in my mind. I was like, you know, I can't believe this is happening. You know, one minute to go, I'm gonna be the world champion in black belt. Something that, if you do jiu-jitsu, you would like to be, you know, it, it's unbelievable for me. The countdown was coming, when the fight was over, I pushed the guy away, you know. I went up, I was in, in ecstasy, you know, I was like, everybody celebrating, my whole team, you know, going crazy. And I could see my girlfriend crying on the stands, my brother was there, he told me a shirt from our team. I put it on, you know, went to Comprido, he hugged me, lifted me up, everybody going crazy. It, it was like, my life was going in slow motion at this time, you know, I could see every single step, I could see photographers taking pictures. Before, I would hope I would be in a picture in a magazine, it almost would never happen before, and now all the flash were towards me, you know, I was going crazy, it was the best feeling that I could have, you know, it was I reached the next level, like I would always dream before. That's how I, I got my first title as a black belt was a world champion. After I won this tournament, I got an invitation to go to Houston. And for me it was great, you know, because I was still looking for a job. So I went to Houston and I got invited to teach there in three academies from the same groups, from the same team, Elite Martial Arts. As I was teaching there and meeting all these people, and I was giving a lot of class, training hard, you know, like two times a day, sometimes giving a lot of privates all day long. And I remember this was really interesting. I remember one day going home with the body all sore, you know, and then I, I was like, man, I can't believe I'm getting paid for this. You know, I can't believe that I'm living out of this. I love Jiu Jitsu, you know, I train Jiu Jitsu every day if I can. And now I was getting invited to do, that was my work now. Even though it was only for three months, I was getting paid for this, to have fun almost. Okay, but it's still in the back of my head, I was a little bit worried because three months is not gonna make my life, you know? I knew that when I went back, I would have to go after a job, I would have to find a solution. I had no intention to open a school in Brazil, you know? I, I didn't want this at the time. So, I start to think, I start to talk, and I start to have an idea to make a website, you know. And from, from the website, I start to, to invite my best friends to enter, also black belts. That, that's when we create the Brazilian black belt website. And once the, the site came, the idea came, we start to have other ideas. We had the idea of the camp, which is already a big success now. We start to have the idea of visiting other school. We create a personal training program where we go to your school, we train you, your team, stay for a week or more. And the ideas start to come and everything starts to, to, to happen, you know. So the, the bad thing, and while I was in Houston, the bad thing that I can say was that I again had a shoulder injury. And remember what the, the doctor said in the beginning, I didn't have the structure to do this sport. So my shoulder was weak. So I decided to go for the physical therapy. It was long and very tiring. It was very hard, but I was, you know, I had my mind focused on this. I, w I wanted to do I didn't want it to be out from the next tournament. I wanted to go for my second title. So I went every day for like many months. I could say four or five months I was going every day, five hours a day I would work in the gym, I would work in the pool, you know, making all kind of exercise with rubber, doing, strengthening up the shoulder and everything. And little by little, I start to, to get back, you know, I was able to compete, small tournament and all this. Around 2004, in April, we had our first camp. But when we planned for the camp, we didn't know it was going to be so good. But for our surprise, when we opened uh, the website for people to sign up, in two weeks, we were 
fulfilled, you know. We had there were people who wanted to come and said, we can't take it anymore. We had four, all the guys in two weeks. We, we knew it was a good idea, but we never expected to be that good in the first. And the camp, I can tell you, was fun. It was very good uh, training. It was a lot of people going there for the same time. And that's interesting to have people from all over the world in the same place because of one reason, for the love of Jiu-Jitsu. And we, we have been so successful that we already had uh, five editions. So the camp was definitely a good experience. The camp was in April, so right after that, I entered a Brazilian tournament. It was like maybe two months before the World Tournament. And I, I couldn't train very good, because like I said, I was uh, uh, getting my shoulder fixed, you know. I wasn't very ready, but I was confident, you know, at least this I had. So when I moved into the final, I made a big mistake, you know, I was like, I was almost cocky, I can say, I was like, it's gonna be an easy fight, and my biggest mistake was instead of focus on the fight, I entered the mat thinking how I was going to be good after, you know, how we're gonna celebrate and stuff, and I didn't focus on the fight, so of course I lost, you know. It was good to learn, you know, uh, I was like, man, that was a big mistake, that's not, that's not me, you know, it's not natural for me, I have to put my head back in place, and that was uh, definitely a good way to learn. I took this experience from, from this one, so I got second place in 2004 in the Resident Tournament. So after that, in the Mundial of 2004 and 2005, I got third place, you know. As I wasn't training properly or was getting back from an injury, it was a good result, you know, being the top three in the world for three years in a row, it's something to be proud, no doubt. I was definitely proud of it, but I wasn't happy because I knew I could do better than this. So, but in the other hand, all my plans, you know, like professionally, in my personal life, everything was good. I was doing many camps with full, uh, full capacity, everybody was there. I was traveling a lot, I get to go to many places that I never expected for, such as Belgium, Holland, France, Poland, Sweden, different cities in Mexico, many different states in the US, you know, I, I was going around. And, and many other places. Well, it's not very often that a world champion in any sport makes their way to West Texas, but a world champion is exactly what Philippe Costa is in black belt jiu-jitsu. Costa, the 2003 winner of the world title, is in Midland right now training a group of locals in the art of Brazilian jiu-jitsu. He is also helping to promote a newly formed group called the West Texas Braza that has a new facility. So, for me, Professionally, I had no complaints. End of 2005, I got married, so everything was going very good on those years for me. But I couldn't train as I used to. In 2006, I got back from my honeymoon overweight, you know. So as I went to travel right after that to Europe for the personal training program, I couldn't lose weight like I should, you know. It's very hard for me when I'm traveling to lose weight. So the result of this was that when I got back to compete in the Brazilian tournament, I had to enter in a weight class that was higher than me. And it couldn't be different, you know, I was, I got my knee injury, you know, I ended up getting hurt and that was even worse because for the next couple of weeks I, I had to stop to recover from my injury. At this time we were only about two months away from the World Tournament. And uh, I went to a trip in Mexico, which also made it even hard for me to drop the last few kilos that I had to lose. But when I got back, I was already getting my weight properly. No, this wasn't a problem anymore. I was training. But to make it worse, I had a, a political disagreement inside the academy that I was training. So I decided not to train anymore over there. Not in the, the team, you know, the team was bigger, the Brazil team is bigger than this. The problem was only at the, the specific school. So what I did was I decided that I was going to train only in my house and at Kyle's house, my friend. So over there we were only five guys. They were lower belts than me, but they were they were better training that I could than I could have expected. 
was really good. Okay, so now we're about to start the 2006 World Tournament. Everything was doing good. I signed up, you know. My, on the day of the tournament, I was, I was already in my weight class. I didn't suffer as much as I used to to lose the weight. So my first fight was against a guy that was considered by the magazine the favorite of the year. He was uh, an athlete from Nova Union. And the fight was good, you know, we, we start, both try, we were both trying to pull guard, you know, we both wanted to, to play on bottom. And as I had in mind to stay on bottom, I pull guard and I stay down there. And then I wait him to decide to come up. When he came up, I started to put the, my guard thing that I like to mount the structure to be defensive. And then I waited the moment where he was trying to pass. I got the sweep, I went to his bag, then I was attacking from there. After I got ahead on points, I was pretty much, you know, letting the, because you're always a little bit more nervous in the first fight, you know. So when I got ahead on points, I was just like taking my time, you know, to wait for for the victory. So I won by a little difference, but it was a good fight. I had control all the time. Okay, so I knew I was going to fight in my second fight with a guy that was champion in the year before as a purple belt. And the funny thing was that for some reason he went from the purple belt straight to the black belt. This guy he's only 18 years old and he was he was supposed to be a new phenomenon. You know? I knew he was good, he was doing good. He was, he's also from Amazon this guy, which like I said before is a state that is considered to make many champions, you know, the state of Jacare and people know it's a, they, all they do with it is train, you know, even more than in Rio de Janeiro. So with this guy, uh, I entered and I was surprised in the beginning because he was going crazy, you know, he was going fast and I was just defending. I never had a chance to attack. He started to, do, to go so fast that he was able to make four points ahead of me. Really, he, he put the hooks on me and I remember myself being there with the hooks, he's trying to choke me and I was like, if, if it wasn't the pass, it would be over for me. I was there, really, I wanted to win again, I didn't want to lose this fight. So I started to defend myself, put my back on the ground, start to get out, he ended up on my half guard and I was like, okay, now it's time for reaction. You know? And I start to set up my sweep, I start to get out of there, I make two points, I attack him, I pass his guard, but he turns before I get the points. So I go to his back, I put one hook in, and I'm attacking, attacking. When I had this hook in, I was like, I'm gonna win this fight, you know, I'm confident that I'm gonna put this other hook. And I think that makes a difference. Like I said before, the mindset, you know, the good thinking will attract good things. So I put the other hook. At this point, I was attacking for the neck. I almost got a submission, you know. I wasn't going only for the points anymore. I wanted to get the submission. I put a submission on. I almost got it. He was holding. But for some reason, lucky him, he was able to defend. So I won my points with six to four. A fight that I started losing by four, I reacted and was able to take the lead and win. Once again, I was in the final. Since 2003, I, I didn't have this feeling for the World Tournament, I was in the final again. 
So I went home, I rest, you know, I, I got ready, I made my strategy, and I was going to fight. I came back the next day to fight the guy who was the champion of 2005. The year before, this guy was the champion. And he was the guy who beat me on the semi-final. That's why I got the third place. He beat me the year before. But that doesn't scare me anymore. When that kind of thing happens, I don't even tell my friends because they go like, oh man, then it's going to be hard and stuff. So when I know I'm going to fight someone that I had lost before, I keep for myself, you know, because I'm going to go confident. It's a new fight, you know. Just like in the school, when you train, sometimes you get beat by a guy who you go in the next day and you beat him back. So it's just like this. It depends on how you're feeling on that day. And I woke up feeling good. I step on the mat. We both know each other's game very good because we fought before. So it was a fight, you know, of strategy, a fight going for, you know, going for, for the kill. So the guy, the, the score is even, but he has some advantage ahead, okay? And he's like pretty much taking his time until he gets and sweep me. So that gives him two points ahead. When he sweep me, I fell. And for one second, I was like, man, I'm gonna lose this. It was like one second. But what I wanna say is that, it's just like in life, you know, that you have always one time that you're gonna decide, am I gonna give up here or am I gonna keep trying? You know, it's always up to you, that's your decision. So at that moment, I took my decision. I said, I'm not gonna give up here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight for the girl here. Then I swept him back and, it was really like quick, but in my head it took a long time. When I swept him back, the score was even, but he still had the advantage. So if the fight was over, at that point it would be a victory for him. I would lose. So in a certain point of the fight, I turned into the third position. He started to attack my back. We roll outside of the match, and when I look to my toe, it has popped out. You know, when the referee starts to put us back inside, I tell the referee, my, my toe has popped out and I have the right for the doctor to see me on this case. So he called the doctor in, the first, oh, and that's, that's the thing, when I got out, instead of going for the doctor, first thing, I went for Comprido who was coaching me from, from outside, you know, so, because this had happened before with me in the academy and Kupri was the one who pulled my toe and put it back. So I was like, oh, put it back, put it back. And you can really see on the tape that I'm like looking to the side and just go, just put it back, put it back. And Kupri cannot put it back. So the doctor can, he tries to pull my finger and it's, it's, it's like he's doing whatever he's doing. I don't know how is the technique to put the toe back in. But I'm not even paying attention to this, you know. I wasn't feeling any pain because of the adrenaline, probably. And I was more worried about the strategy because I needed to win the fight. And I was talking with Comprido, he was giving me a tip. So I stepped back in the mat in the same position. Remember, the guy was on my back. He had one hook and the choke. So I knew I would have to defend this, get out of the bad position and still fight to get the goal. So I'm defending the choke here. The guy goes, try to switch his body to make the submission. I'm able to manage it, to take my head out and I take it on. And then my friends were like, ah, going crazy. And I have, now I need to pass, you know. I try to pass, I try to pass. And there is a moment that I'm so desperate that I stand up and I tell him to come up. You know, I wanted him to fight up with me, but he, he was just standing there on the ground, wait. So I had to go again. I try to make a pass, we go our ones. When we go our own bounds, we come back, there is like 25, maybe 30 seconds to the end of the fight. You know? We come back standing, and when I walk back, I was like, I'm gonna win. Not even for a moment, I was thinking, oh, it's over, 30 seconds, I cannot do anymore. And I walk in, I, I don't know if he's gonna pull guard again. He doesn't know if I'm gonna pull guard either, you know, he's being defensive. So what I do, I pull guard quickly, I set up a sweep that is very risky because you start to give your back, you know. But as I do the sweep and he's about to take my back, I go on top, then I, I can only see the half going up with the hand, giving the two points. The crowd was going crazy 
and I was like holding myself, waiting for, for the whistle, and the fight was over. And again, the same feeling, even by saying, you know, I, I feel like I did it again, you know. It was, so many people had to shut their mouth, you know, I was able to do it again. Nobody can say it was lucky, I was lucky the first time. Nobody can say anything else. I did it again. Two times world champion. I run towards my friends. I go, they lift me, I celebrate, I jumping up and down like crazy. And it was a great feeling that I, I will never forget. This was definitely something that I want to share with you. you know? I want you to feel how I feel. I want you to, to feel a little bit of this emotion. And I was very proud. And really, I, I, I have to thank everyone who helped me on this uh, way until here.